Sony's full-frame A7R Mark I, give or take 36 megapixels, versus the Sony A6300 crop sensor APS-C, give or take 24 megapixels, using the same lens, the FE 28mm 2. This presents a problem because the APS-C camera has a crop factor of 1.5, so I won't bother hiding the results to the end because you will know that the photo on the right is the 6300 and the photo on the left is the a7r again they're both using the same lens it was a little bit more overcast the clouds came in unfortunately so bear in mind that with the colors but all we're really interested here is the sharpness and the quality and really what you prefer it doesn't make any difference but much else what photo do you prefer so, straight off the bat, looking at them, oh, it's tricky at this angle, really. Um, there's too much difference in the focal lengths for me to really be able to tell you what one I prefer over to the other. So, let's go in a bit, do some peeking around, see exactly what we've got. I'm going to have to adjust to compensate for that crop factor so what does the extra megapixels give us when we're both using this same prime lens well whether it's to do with the fact it's more zoomed out or whether it's the, the extra megapixels who knows but i'm seeing the picture on the left which is the 7r to be more detailed, to be more sharp. However, as we look into the mountain regions, and again, this could be because of the light. This really isn't the best comparison, but it's all I've got. However, I'm still seeing more detail in the in the buildings here. I'm seeing more detail in this dwelling, more details in the trees, and especially as this is. 1.5 times zoomed out as well. I'd imagine if we were more zoomed in using the more equivalent lens, it would be even better. Maybe a, a 50 millimeter would versus uh, versus something to give us more of that depth of field. But I don't have it available, so we're just gonna have to make do. Let's look at this dwelling here. See what you make of it. It's close, it's certainly close. I'm certainly seeing more details now in the in the mountains, but again, that could be because the the sun was shining brighter. So you're going to have to ignore some of the features of this comparison. It's not the best, like I said, but hey, it's something, and it's given you an example. On this now, this dwelling's more sharp. So. What it appears, interesting result here, actually. I would say that the 6300 is sharper on the corners, which would make perfect sense because this is a crop sensor, so we're looking directly through more of the center of the lens and as such, not focusing on the corners. Yeah, I'm definitely seeing more details around these corners, whereas the full frame is really dropping off. On the flip side, when we go into the center of the photo, I'm seeing more detail on the 7R. Interesting, not what I was expecting. I thought it would be a complete landslide really for the 7R here, but not bad at all. The 6300's putting a good fight and is sharper in the corners, whereas the 7R is sharper in the center. So I suppose it would really depend on what kind of photography you're wanting to do. I'm quite a fan of landscape using a telephoto zoom and then stitching them together. So on that, I think the A6300 could be better. Whereas if you're really going for that wide look, the 7R would be better. Again, swings and roundabouts, horses for courses. Make your own mind up. Tell me what photo you prefer. And there you go. Another comparison and I'll try and do one a bit later using a more comparative lens.
As usual guys, it's been emotional.